Hello everyone, today we're having a look at how to make this cable stayed bridge. To build this bridge we're going to be using this kit over here and it's a relatively simple kit there's not a huge amount of complexity in, in building it and there's not a huge number of components in it. So it's pretty straightforward. You're going to need a pencil and a craft knife or a pair of scissors. Nothing, nothing major here. And this kit really is, um, if anything, just a, an example of a cable state, so a bridge. So it's, it's already um, been designed for you and it's going to be used as a platform for you to, to then, once you've built this bridge, to go and design your own bridge uh, based on the same principles. So if you unpack the bits that you'll find in the kit, you'll see you've got a, uh, an insert which just shows you what you get and what you should be thinking about. Um, you've got two half hourglass profiles. These are the ramps for our bridge. Then you're going to have two main sections of our bridge deck. And you'll have two of our bridge towers which are in the form of A-frames. You'll find that you've got two elastic bands. You've got a bunch of skewers. There should be about five skewers there. Um, and you've got a, paste, a syringe of glue and a roll of thread. And this is the cables that we're gonna be using. Yours might be a different color to mine. I've got a funky purple one. Cool, so let's get started into building our bridge. Uh, quick note, what you might find useful is to have a ruler with you as well. So, to start with, you can clear these things off, we're going to have a look at using one of our frames and one of our, or at least our tower and a deck. Remember, the flat part of the bridge is called the deck. Now, you're going to take this frame and you're going to take your deck and stick it through and then twist it down so that the deck fits in the middle of the center part of the hourglass on the frame there. So you can see it's quite a, a tight fit, it's, it's reasonably snug, but it's not, it's not actually held in place properly. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our elastic band, we're gonna slide it over the top of the, the bridge and pull it all the way down and drop that into the one side, grab the other side, bring it around, slot it in. Now our deck is attached to our frame, at least, Yes, that's right. Our deck is attached to our tower and it still has an element of flexibility. So this can move up and down. And that allows us to then take the cables and attach them to the deck and let the, the cables take the support of the, the, the deck rather than it all just sitting on the frame over here. Okay, so that's the first one. You need to make two of those. Okay. So we have both of our sections, our towers and our decks attached together. Now we, or at least built, now we need to attach them together. So we're going to grab one of our skewers and we are going to have a look along the, the center of our deck. You can see that our cardboard has got the flute running in this direction. You're going to take, sort of line it up from around there. So if you look at where this is pointing, it's going to point to there. We don't want it to come out of one of the holes that's on this side. So from towards the edge, but not close enough to the edge for it to stick out. We're going to take this and slide it into one of the flutes and push it all the way until it sits about halfway along the deck. And this is kind of almost acting like, like steel reinforcing within our bridge bridges deck. So um, we're going to do that on that side. We're going to take another skewer and we're going to slide it down in the same place on the other side. That was a little bit too close. I'm going to move it across one, slide it in to the same point. And then we're going to take the other side of our bridge and slot the two together. Right, so we've got these two sections stuck together now. Um, and at this stage, it's really cool to be able to see how much movement the deck has and the towers, how wobbly the towers are. And this is this is really cool because it's when you add in the cables, you suddenly see how much how much more strength and rigidity you're adding to this bridge. Cool. So 
That's the main part of our bridge deck and our tower is done. We need to add on the cable stays. But before we do that, I want to just show you what you're going to do for the ends of your bridge. Because normally you're bridging a bridge between two things, like it's crossing a river or it's going over a road um, on a highway or something like that. Um, so we need to have an abutment over here or a ramp to get up onto the bridge. And that's what these guys are for. So if you have a look, there's two little slots, notches put on the sides there. That's showing you where you need to create a fold mark. Now, um, if you look at the cardboard, it's got one side where you can see like straight lines going on down and others, another side which is smooth. I like to keep this side as the top part of the bridge because it looks better. So that's the underside. So put it down facing underside up and you're going to grab your ruler. Like I said earlier on, it might be useful to have a ruler and you're going to use the straight edge of your ruler, line it up against the two marks that you've got and you're going to crush the flutes by pressing it down quite firmly and you'll see what happens is it creates a kink and that now then gives us the end part of our, our ramp so that a car or a person can walk up and get onto the bridge so instead of having an abutment <laughs> which um, is bridge terminology for the bit that support the bridge on either side, we are building ramps. And what you're gonna do is going to take a skewer. We don't need the skewers to be as long as the center um, uh, supports that we've done where we've used a full skewer. So I'm gonna take a crop knife and just cut mine. I'm gonna measure it to say this part from there to there is about two centimeters, maybe two and a half. And then I know on the other side, uh, of the bridge if i bring that into the camera's view here we've got let's see maybe let's have it go down at least five centimeters so two plus five gives us seven so i'm going to cut off a skewer section at seven seven centimeters long and I, to cut a skewer like this if you just roll the blade over the skewer like that you score it all the way around you can see that little score line and you can just snap it off it cuts off quite neatly. You can do the same thing with a pair of scissors. So demonstrate here, seven centimeters. If you take it to the, the point where you've got the most leverage on your scissors and you score it all the way around, you can take that and you've got that score point and you can snap it off just as neatly. So you're not limited to the tools if you don't have, um, if you don't have a craft knife. So you're going to do the same thing um, for the other side, exactly like we've done it before in the middle. You're going to take this, slot it in towards the edge there, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and then slide them in. Let's see, that looks like a good place there and there. So we're slotting it in there, and now you can see that we've got the abutment part of our bridge or the ramp part on our bridge to get onto the bridge. Okay, so now you've got your bridge together, you've got it all sort of fastened together, but it's still loose. There's still sections that can open and close. So that's when the glue comes in handy. You're going to pull the end bit off the glue and pull the sections apart a little bit. And you can just run a, just very carefully, the screw glue can come out very quickly. Put a blob of glue on the skewer on both sides and you can also run just a seam along the edge here to hold the two sections of cardboard together and you're going to slot them together like that just run your finger over it and it'll smooth that over and you're going to do the same in the middle part of me really wants to try and get that to line up perfectly but for the sake of the video I don't think it's necessary so I'm just going to glue it together and it can annoy me when I put this on display somewhere. Okay, so we're gonna do that. Do another one. Let's see. The great thing about using wood glue with the cardboard is that it dries very quickly because the cardboard sucks the moisture out of the, um, the glue. And so you can see that's practically dried already. 
but I would give it 10-15 minutes to, to dry nicely before putting load onto your bridge. You can also glue at the bottom over here, run some glue underneath to join your towers to your, abutment, uh, your, your deck, but that's not entirely necessary for right now. Let's get stuck into connecting up the cables on this. So we're going to take our thread and we're going to unravel some of it. Don't unravel all of it because you can unravel it as you use it and then it's not going to be a, a big tangled mess. Now I'm going to move the bridge under over here um, and if you have a look along the side of your towers you've got three slots over there and you've got a corresponding three slots on this side three slots on that side, three slots on that side, and three slots on that side. Now, if you think carefully, and I'm going to leave this up to you, but you can get the cable to run through this entire thing and tie it underneath in one go. You don't have to have separate sections of um, cable. So uh, that's a challenge for you to figure out. I can show you some pictures of what it looks like, and those will be up on the screen now. Um, but I'm going to give it a shot over here. The idea is to try and keep the, the thread tensioned as you go, but not too tight. Um, otherwise, it's gonna cause problems. Right, so what I've done here is in one go, I've managed to thread all of these um, cables and they just hook into the slots as we go around. What's important to note here is that initially when you do it, try and get the threads to be reasonably ten tensioned as you, as you go, but what you can do is when you're done, you can see here I've got the thread ending over here and the thread starting over here. You can, Put a little bit of tension on those from underneath and just work around once you've once you've done it uh, you've got the, the threads in place and just work all the way around and just try and get them really nice and, and and tensioned then turn it upside down and you can tie it off underneath here so that it locks it in place but now that's only locked the tension of the um i'm just going to cut this thread over here that's only locked the tension of the total system. It hasn't locked the thread onto the tower or onto the base, so it can still move. And I'll show you what I mean in a moment. Just wanna give this a little knot. Tying this thread, you might need to find somebody who's got an available finger to just put their finger on that knot so you can tie it. But I don't have an assistant at the moment, so I'm just going to tie it as best I can. If it's not tight, then you can mark me down. Right, so I've tied it at the bottom here. Nobody looks at the bottom, so you don't have to worry about it being neat. <laughs> what we've got is we've got the cables and these are transferring tension, or at least the, the force already. You can see if I put it down and I press there, you can't really see, you can see this moving a little bit. You can't see from the, th sort of the side that it's, it's really sort of holding it nicely. But if I move it from side to side, you can see how much rigidity we have over there versus if I take from this side and I move this from side to side there. You can see that this has got a lot of movement going that way. But this is not locked completely because the threads over here are not secured to the tower. So when you've tensioned your system, and you've got it all in the right position, you're gonna take some of your glue and you need to put a blob of glue, and this is where you need to make sure your tower is straight because once it's glued in position, it's not going anywhere. So you can take your tower to the side and put a little blob of glue at the top of the tower to glue the thread onto the tower's side. And it can be quite tricky to get the right amount of glue out, especially if the tip of the glue has dried a little bit. So this glue is just, just wood glue. It's not toxic. You can get it on your fingers, but try not to get it on your clothes. So I'm just gonna put a little blob of glue on both sides of the thread, 
going all the way around and that locks the thread onto the tower and prevents it from sliding up and down this way and, and then really allows the cables to tension and hold the tower at least the deck without sliding so if we're pushing it down here it's spreading the force equally from this way and then supporting it at the back over here but it's not going to slide through which is important and what you can do is when you when you've done that you can also go around maybe from underneath would be a, a neater more beautiful place to uh, to glue these sections but you can put a blob of glue um, on either point over there to stop the cable from sliding and allowing the, the deck to twist. So let's say a heavy vehicle drives along this side of the bridge. If this cable can slide, then this part of the bridge can start pressing down or, or going down. But if the, if the cable is locked, it's not able to move and it keeps the, the bridge secure. And that's the whole point of having our cables securing the bridge over just having a plain uh, beam bridge with a flat deck that's just reinforced with concrete and, uh, and steel. So we've put our blobs of glue down there. We put our blobs of glue over here. We can do the same on that side of the cable. And then our, our bridge is basically done. Um, you're going to move over to this side. You've still got a lot of thread over here and you're going to wire or at least hook up the cables for this other side. And that's really where you're going to start to experiment with understanding where the forces are moving on our bridge, where the forces act. Um, if, you, if you do a study of looking at the side of the bridge and, and just pressing down on this point, see where those forces move. See, before you put the cables on on the other side, have a look and see how does the deck strength feel before the cables? How does the deck strength feel after you've put the cables and you should notice a very big difference because those cables add an incredible amount of strength and stability so from there you're going to move into a bit of a drawing project where you're going to draw the bridge and you're going to exercise your skills in um, three-dimensional drawing and also in first angle orthographic projection and from there later on you might even be tasked to design your own cable stayed bridge and build that depending on which course you're doing. I hope you had fun building this project. I hope that it looks really great and it finds a super cool place to sit in your bedroom, in your workplace, in your classrooms. Um, have fun and stay curious.